Next, we're going to talk about specular reflection. Specular reflection uh, is highly dependent on the angle of incination. The next uh, example, we'll talk about the, uh, the right upper guardian view of the uh, liver and, and right kidney. You can see that the uh, fascia, the gerota fascia uh, surrounding the kidney, has uh, variation in terms of intensity. In the middle of the image, you see a bright hyperchoic uh, echo, whereas uh, further down to, uh, up towards the superior pole, the, uh, the layer is uh, more hypochoic. If we draw a, a normal line uh, onto the uh, hyperchoic fascia in the, uh, the upper uh, near field, uh, the middle of the image, and uh, uh, put an ultrasound beam uh, insinating on this uh, fascia and showing the returning echo. The angle of insination is you know, around 85 to 90 degrees. Specifically for specular reflectors like the fascia or pleura or diaphragm, you will get a strong reflection. And the reason for this is simple. As the beam comes out from the transducer, it returns within uh, the field of view to the transducer, so the echo will be higher. Now on the other hand, if you draw a normal line towards the more hypochoic uh, region of the, uh, the superior part of the kidney, and you uh, draw an incoming ultrasound beam uh, reflecting off of that surface, you see that because the, uh, the, the angle of insinuation in this case is much less than 85, 90 degrees, it's probably around 60, 65, 70 degrees. In this case, the incoming beam hits the fascia, but it reflects outside the field of view. So if you sum up all the ultrasound beams, uh, you know, reflecting off of the surface, there is much less. Uh, reflection going back to the receiver. And therefore, with this uh, decreased angle of insinuation that is very far from 90 degrees, you end up having uh, a much less, uh, more of a hypochoic uh, and not hyperechoic reflection. And this is a prime example of specular reflection. It's highly dependent on angle of insinuation. Finally, uh, the last uh, order of business is to talk about speckle. Speckle technically is an artifact due to acoustic scatterers. As you know from the first lecture, acoustic scatter is highly dependent on the frequency. The higher the frequency, the more uh, is the reflection coming back from these scatterers. The mechanism is due to constructive and destructive interference. And as I mentioned, the texture becomes finer and more intense with higher ultrasound frequency. This is a uh, ultrasound image of the liver, which is an example of a, um, a structure with speckle. Other structures include uh, thyroid, um, testicles, and uh, a lot of kind of smaller organs uh, that uh, have this property. Let's talk about the four types of ultrasound artifacts. Number one, resolution-related artifacts. This is similar to what we talked about in the transducers lecture, where resolution or the limitations thereof can cause artifacts. Second one is propagation-related artifacts. This forms the bulk of the artifacts we'll talk about in this lecture. The third type of artifacts that actually are more commonly appreciated in ultrasound scanning in the clinical setting is attenuation-related artifacts. And the fourth one, which might be a little more esoteric to the common users of ultrasound, is Doppler and color instrumentation-related artifacts. So this is the template of this lecture. The four types of artifacts again, resolution, propagation, attenuation, and Doppler. Let's first start off discussing resolution-related artifacts. Resolution artifacts, as you well know, is made up of three components. There's the axial component, which is in, in the direction of the ultrasound beam. There is the lateral resolution, which is perpendicular to the direction of the ultrasound beam. And then there is slice thickness. Let's first review axial resolution. Now failure of uh, resolution of two separate reflectors uh, in the direction parallel to the beam line is due to axial resolution. Typically, we call that the X direction. Now, in terms of lateral resolution, or the Y direction, it describes the failure to resolve two separate reflectors that are located adjacent to each other in the plane perpendicular 
to the beam line, but within the two-dimensional image of the beam mode view is a function of beam width. And then the third component of resolution artifacts is slice thickness, which we described earlier in this lecture. It describes the finite width of the beam producing extraneous echoes in normally anechoic or echo-free uh, structures or regions. It is due to, or subsequent to, the partial volume effect, which we're going to go in detail in the next several slides. As you can see, the transducer gives out a two-dimensional uh, ultrasound beam, which is detailed with the, the blue. And there are three major sections. There, uh, there is the section close to the surface, there's the focal zone, and then there's a section towards the end beyond the focal zone. If the reflective interest is distal to the focal zone, you can see that the out-of-plane volume is much larger, and therefore the contribution to the overall image is greater. Therefore, the out-of-plane resolution will affect the in-plane uh, resolution of the ultrasound image. This is a, uh, a very common uh, the splatter view, uh, in this case a, uh, in the sagittal section, has some uh, hypochoric uh, appearing fluid towards the bottom of the bladder. You see that there is this hyperchoic region surrounding the bladder, which is essentially bowel gas. Now the bowel gas are all around the bladder, and so this out-of-plane hyperchoic uh, reflectors are uh, contributing to the formation of clutter, or the slice thickness artifact, otherwise in this case known as pseudo-sludge, that is an artifact and not real. Uh, that's seen within the bladder. So this is a prime example of slice thickness artifact, which is very difficult to fix. It's nothing that you could uh, modulate or, or change uh, with knobs on the ultrasound machine. It's rather a, a, a rather difficult technological limitation, even in today's ultrasound system. However, it's good, interesting to note that grading lobes are another explanation for this particular pseudo-sludge effect. Now, how are you going to uh, what are the potential resolution or solutions to resolution artifacts? As promised, this lecture is unlike other lectures that might you might be uh, uh, privy to or, or have uh, uh, listened to, in that we, we're uh, going to present uh, nobology or, or potential solutions towards minimizing or even eliminating uh, different types of artifacts. In terms of axial resolution, you can use higher frequency to minimize the axial limitation. In terms of uh, lateral resolution, you can do the same thing in terms of frequency. In terms of slice thickness, uh, you can operate with some of the same thicknesses as for lateral resolution, but also you can reposition the patient to dispel bowel gas, for example, so that you can minimize the effect of clutter due to uh, slice thickness resolution. Now let's move on to talk about propagation artifacts. As I mentioned earlier, this group of artifacts covered under the propagation name tag, forms the largest group of artifacts within the four types that we're going to discuss in this lecture. It includes phenomena such as mirror image, reverberation, multi-path phenomenon, speed propagation error, as well as uh, other uh, the artifacts that we're going to discuss in detail later on. The first artifact under propagation that we want to discuss is reverberation. Reverberation is an intuitive phenomenon that you associate with sound, with light, any phenomenon that bounces back and forth around a central object. In this case, we have repetitive reflections of ultrasound waves that occur between two or more highly reflective layers. The result is a, the appearance of equally spaced bands of hyperechoic signal that become uh, diminishingly less in amplitude distal from the object of interest. In short, it is a reflection phenomenon, but we need to look at it as a nonetheless a very useful artifact. In this next ultrasound still image, we show that uh, within this tumor uh, of an unspecified location that is reflective of the ultrasound waves, you have this classic reverberation picture of the first echo, which is the brightest, uh, hyperchoic band, followed by multiple lines of equally spaced bands of diminishing amplitudes, as pointed out by the arrows. 